Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with a Birthday Chicks card. Such an original name, because I'm going to be using the Birthday Chicks stamp set from MFT. And these are most of the images from the set. And I stamped it twice because I had this idea. And it'll be a cute idea to use with a bunch of different stamp sets, as well as this one that has these cascading funny birdies that are falling down onto a pile at the bottom. And I'm on the one piece, I'm going to die cut all of them out. And they're in the same position since I did it with my Misty. So I have two copies of the same thing. And it's going to allow this to line up perfectly with the colored images that I'm going to do on the other side. So I'm just going to use some washi tape to stick them all down and get that piece all ready so that I'm going to be able to float that and let all the birdies peek through the holes. Won't that be cute? So let's get busy coloring the birdies and I'm going to play around with something from the Copic Jumpstart class. So if you haven't heard about the Copic Jumpstart class, it's a really good primer on Copic markers, how they work, why they work, how the colors work, the numbering system, and making you do a lot of color charts so that you really get to know your markers really well. And people with only a few markers have actually taken this and said it's still really educational for them. So I encourage you, if you haven't taken it yet, it's going to show you you don't need to buy all the markers because you're going to be able to do things with different combinations you never thought of, like this one. So this is a V12, and it's a purple. Yes, I'm using purple to shade yellow. Same idea as when I do faces, because I use different purples and blues to shade faces. And purples work because they're the complement. And that's one of the concepts that we'll really dive deep into in Copic Jumpstart. So if you're interested in learning more about markers, that is a helpful thing that I offer to you because it's been really helpful for other folks. I've even heard that people have taken it with like Spectrum Noir markers and still learned a ton because there's a bunch of color theory in there. Whether or not the techniques will work with other brands of markers, the information that's in it on color and that sort of thing is quite helpful. So I've put a little C shape of shadow on each one of my little birdies and then I'm going to go over that purple with another yellow. And yeah look at me I'm not even using Y17 because Y17 was too orangey and I wanted these to really be chicks since that is the name of the video it's chicks so I wanted them to feel more yellow and the Y17 has a little more orange in it than I wanted so there we go going to use a Y08 instead. Now yellows are can be challenging to blend and you kind of have to wait until after it dries in order to see how it worked out because when the alcohol is in the paper it's moist and that makes the paper kind of gray which means that what your coloring looks like when you start off may change when it's dry. So it might look all smoothly blended but you're seeing gray you're not seeing just the color. So you need to wait until it's dry and you might need to go in and make some adjustments. And so between a Y08 and a Y04, there is a Y06. So sometimes throwing a little of that in there helps to make a better transition of colors. But it depends on how well the blending went in the first first deal. And some people also choose to like color one bird at a time. So you're dealing with only wet color right there. Those the areas don't have time to dry while you're coloring all of the other birds. And you can certainly do that. Just beware that as you keep pouring color into the little birdie, it's going to bleed out of the edges. So letting it dry a little bit in between actually can help you to compensate for a little bit of that bleeding and keep that from happening. So since I used purple for my shadows, I thought I'd use purple for all of the birthday hats. And you can make them all different hats, but I thought they're all at one party. When you buy birthday hats, you buy a whole bunch of the same hat. Everybody wears the same hat. So there you go. They're all at a party wearing the same birthday hats. Now for the panel that I'm going to put on the front, I've put the power tabs all over the back. They're a very thin dimensional adhesive. They're thinner than the, the big Scotch uh, 3M tape. And they're going to make this look like the birds are all just receded a little tiny bit into this, these holes that are made that are just the right shape for them. And I also trimmed out the outside edge so there's a little edge around it as well. 
and stamped on the inside and put little birdies in there. Little highlights with a white pen. And here's the envelope because I wanted to color all the stamps like I always do. And I hadn't used these yet or I hadn't used the cupcake yet. So I added one of the birds and masked him out so I could stamp the yay 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 with him flying in front of it. And then just color up the cupcake so that it will give the recipient an idea that there is a birthday greeting coming inside that envelope. And I don't know about you, but I'm much happier when I know that the mail I'm about to open is something fun as opposed to a bill or who knows what else. So I love when people stamp on the outside of cards that I get. And uh, oh, by the way, several people a week, it seems, seem to ask for my address because they want to send a card to like my dogs or something. So the address is on my website. If you go to my contact page, the address is on there. So the dogs love to get mail. And we're gonna just do a little shading here on the cuppy cake and then add a little bit of that white pen detail onto that as well to make it kind of shiny and happy like the inside of the card. A little bit on the hat. And there we go, all done quick and easy and it was a lot of fun to color all the little birdies but give them that extra panel on top that has a little bit of dimension to it a little bit of a border and a lot of fun on the inside as well so i hope you enjoyed this video maybe you'll try it yourself sometime all the supplies are linked down below as they always are and they're also on my blog if you want to go pin something to your pinterest page to remind you of the idea to try sometime when you're in your craft room. I'll see you guys next time. Go out in the meantime and make something beautiful. Take care. Bye-bye.